Eddie, thank you for joining us again. How's it feel to be back in Singapore competing now? Excellent, man. I uh, I always did well as a tournament fighter. Um, back in uh, back in the day in 2005, 2006, years when uh, Dream was Dream was doing her lightweight Grand Prix or Bellator or whatever, I always did well in tournaments. Um, I don't even know if I ever lost a tournament fight. So to get turned over, I just I'm able to add to everything that I did a, you know, during my camp. I'm able to add to it. I'm faster. I'm stronger. Um, my timing is better. I just think staying more active for me, it's not something I like to do. I like to fight and then go home with my family and vacation and do what I want. But I know it's a necessary evil if I want to uh, compete at my highest level. Now, the result of this DQ review is out. It's now been changed to a no contest. Are you happy with that decision? Yeah, yeah, I'm happy. I'm happy with the no contest. I mean, it's the, it's the most I can ask for, for sure. All right, Eddie, we got media now from all over the world ready to ask you questions. First one's going to be from Dylan Bowker of My MMA News. Dylan, please go ahead. Hey, Eddie, how's it going? What's up, Dylan? Oh, I'm just hanging out here, but I was curious with the relief that I presume is coming from this outcome change coupled with the fact that you got to compete earlier this month could we see the most composed yet also capably violent eddie alvarez we've seen in the one circle capably violent i love i love the ring of that <laughs> yeah i'm i'm relaxed man i'm confident my training has been like probably some of the best training and i'm competing at the highest level that I've competed at in a long, 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 long time. So I'm um, very happy, very confident going in this fight and um, looking forward to how I'm going to perform. Every fight's different. Every opponent's different. But I have high expectations of myself here. And just a quick follow-up to that point. I'm curious your level of familiarity with your opponent, Akre Yoon, as you again enter the one circle here. Yeah, um, very tough fighter, um, very good jab, leg kicks, long, rangy, um, good boxing, good, um, good movement. Um, I'm looking forward to a battle. Um, he's game. I think he's a lot more game than a lot of the other fighters on this roster. I think he's willing to hang in there and fight it out to the end. Um, and I respect that. I actually have really good fights with guys like that. It always takes... It always takes the right dance partner to put on a great fight. And I think uh, uh, Oak is, uh, I think he's the right dance partner to get it done. Looking forward to seeing it. And thanks for the time, Eddie. Thank you. Our next question will go to Jay Anderson of Cage Side Press. Jay Anderson, please proceed. Thanks very much. And Eddie, thanks for the time today. Um, I know a lot has been made of that DQ, but I want to ask one more question about it. If that DQ doesn't happen at one on TNT one, is Eddie Alvarez fighting this week? Hmm. Oh, wow. That's a great question. That's a great question. Uh, yeah. The answer to that is yes. Um, yeah, I think so. I think I presented this opportunity that I was presented to come back, to stay active, to take advantage of, I had almost two and three camps that I missed that got canceled because of COVID. So um, it was important to make up as many fights as I could in a short amount of time. I missed a lot of fights. I was a year and a half off and I went, I went to the gym. I own my own, my craft. I, um, I innovated. I worked on some things and got better at some things. And uh, I think not staying active would have been a, a disservice to me. So um, they gave me an opportunity to be active. They got, gave me an opportunity to come back and compete against one of the top guys in the division. And um, it's an opportunity that I needed to take advantage of. Good stuff. And I know you're not going to look past your opponent here, but there's another fighter on this card that has been on quite a run recently who you've got history with, and that's Shinya Aoki. Um, would you be open to a rubber match with him down the line? I don't... Yeah, whatever. I don't, and I'm, I'm really fixated. I'm like, I feel like Aoki's, um, to me, it's in the past. I feel like, uh, he beat me very early on in my career. 
when he did beat me. It was very early on. I didn't know anything. And when we did finally rematch, when I when I was a full flown fledged MMA fighter and I was well rounded, I beat him pretty quickly. So um, I don't I don't feel the need to kind of beat Shinyaoki to put it to rest. But if the if the rematch if the trilogy match happens and the fans want it, then it happens. But it's not something that I necessarily care for or want or need um my eyes on christian lee my that's my eyes on the prize he has the belt and that's who that's who i'm lasered in on and last one for me with that in mind what are your thoughts on christian lee's performance earlier this month against uh timothy nash you can it was excellent great great hook um he threw he got his head off he threw the hook Land it clean, put Timothy away, and um, uh, Christian Lee kind of uh, never ceased to amaze me. He goes out, he puts on phenomenal performances, and um, I'm just wondering when we're going to fight. He he says my name after fights all the time. I want to fight Eddie Alvarez. I'm saying I want to fight him. I don't know what I don't know what's going on in between, but a fight needs to happen. And um, I don't care who I don't care who he beats. In, um, in the division, uh, um, I, I, he has the opportunity to beat someone who, who's great. And I've done great things, and I've beat champions all over the world for, for almost two decades. And um, if he don't fight me, he'll be losing an opportunity to do something great. All right. Well, hopefully that can get made uh, after this one. Best of luck this week. Thank you. Our next question goes to Jason Burgos of MixedMartialArts.com. Jason Burgos, you're up. Hey, Eddie, how you doing? Um, our plans for, you know, there's a big story a couple of weeks ago. Our plans for this fight with Oscar Del Hoy in July for Triller, is that still being negotiated? Is it finalized? Is it a dead issue? What's the latest with that? I would say it's a dead issue for right now. Um, honestly, the, the whole boxing MMA thing, uh, when I watched it with uh, Ben and and uh, basically, I wa- what I watched was a bunch of MMA fighters in the realm of boxing who had the heart, the courage, and um, were able to, you know, have the humility to put themselves on the line in a form and skill that they're not professionals in and go and put it out there. I have yet to see a boxer come and do that in the MMA realm. And it's really, it's kind of bothering me and it put me off. Um, I'd like to see the carriage on the boxing side for a guy to step in the MMA realm. And uh, I felt like when, when we were saying yes to the Oscar thing, I felt like maybe I was, maybe I was making a decision too quickly that I just feel like this is my sport. This is what I've done my whole world, my whole life. And um if you want a real fight, this is a fight. MMA is a fight. Boxing is is uh, a fifth of what we do. It's a part of it. It's not a fight. It's boxing. It's not a fight. MMA is a fight. It's everything. So you, uh, whoever beat Ben Askren, whoever beat Frank Mir, they didn't beat them in a fight. They beat them in boxing. I plan to ask Chatri about it too, but would you be interested if something like that happened in like the one cage, maybe under some special rules, which one has done, maybe like you're not allowed to kick, but if Oscar is willing to fight you in a cage, would that be more of what you want? I, me and Chachi didn't sit down and iron out the details. And I just, uh, I don't know. I'm, I, you know, I, uh, I have pride in what I do and I've been doing this for a long time. And I feel like it's going to take a lot for me to um, give that up, you know, to sell my skin in boxing, you know, and be, be outmatched and go in there. I just, the whole event put me off and it looked like it just looked like boxing one oh one, And that's what boxing has come to. And it's a bunch of really good talented guys fighting guys who are subpar and, and they build up a subpar guy to look, half decent, just so a, just so a guy who outclasses on that matches and can look like a champion mm. MMA, the, the best fight, the best. That's why this sport is so great. That's what, that's what makes this sport so great. It's what boxing used to be and no longer is. So, um, sorry. It just gets me, uh, gets me fired up. 
<laughs> seeing that event and then seeing these boxers act like tough guys and act like they're winning fights. They're not winning fights. They're winning boxing matches. MMA is a fight. If you want to call yourself a better fighter and say you want to fight, step inside a cage and do all skill sets, every single skill set. And I agree a thousand percent. Just one last question. And that whole negotiation opened up an interesting conversation. Does, I know one gave you a great contract. That's why you left UFC. Is that part of your deal? You are allowed to go do boxing and those kind of things outside of one, maybe with their approval, maybe not. I just, I just think under um, Chatri, we have more of a partnership, me and him talk. Um, I sit down with Chatri and we can strategize and talk. We're, it's a, um, a win-win situation for us both. We're in business together. It's not like, uh, I don't feel like it's a dictatorship where it's like, this is who I am and you're going to do this and sit down. And I know everything's a simple conversation. And when you, when you're, you know, when the CEO of the organization is willing to have a conversation with you, willing to sit down and talk, it just feels better. And I think more, more gets done, more gets done for the organization and more gets done for the fighters. All right. Thank you so much, Eddie. Our next question will go to Damon Martin of MMA Fighting. Damon Martin, please proceed. Damon, can you hear us? Yep. Can you hear me now? We hear you now. Okay. Uh, Eddie, I know there was a lot of emotions coming out of the last fight, and, and I know you were talking to one championship. Were you confident pretty much all along that they were going to make the right decision and overturn that? I know you wanted to win, but at least getting a no contest with what happened the last time. Uh, no, <laughs> I, I can't say I was confident. You know, I was going back and forth. Um, I was confident that the overall crowd believed that um, – that it, it shouldn't have been a DQ. So that made me be hopeful that um, that also the panel that was reviewing my DQ would see that or at least hear the voices, like the overwhelming voices um, and not just fans because fans could sometimes not know what they're talking about, but, you know, professionals, referees, and um people who are well-respected in the game, like hear out their opinions. So that made me hopeful, but can't say I was totally confident. I didn't know. I wasn't sure uh, exactly who was reviewing it or, you know, what they were looking at. So, you know, I, I've been blessed. I've been happy that um, they considered my review and they sat down and they took it as serious as I take my career. I take my career very serious. I take my, um, my performances very serious. And I'm glad that the panel sat down and um, considered it the same way I did. And they took it, they took it dead serious and they reviewed it. And um, it's not important that, that things get messed up. Sometimes it's important that we can uh, sit back and reassess and say, all right, maybe there was a little mess up here and um, we can do better. And I, I've done that in my career and everybody can do it. I think it would make the sport a lot better. With that being said, Eddie, uh, you know, obviously this was a decision made by one championship. You've dealt with American commissions a lot throughout your career, and you know how hard it is to get anything overturned in America. A referee makes the wrong call. We've never, hardly ever seen that actually change in a fight. Is there any part of you that's happy that you had an organization that was willing to at least, you know, take the time to review this and actually put a panel to work to do it? Uh, because we got to be honest, if this happened in the United States, chances are it wouldn't have been overturned. Yeah, I don't know. I never, I, I personally never dealt with the United States. And um, I just, I, like I said, I'm blessed that um, it went to a board, it got reviewed, and that they considered it as deeply as I consider my career. Um, stuff like that, that, that small gesture or um, them looking that over and saying, let's take this serious, let's sit down and review this, and let's hear everyone out, all the professionals out. And, um, you know, I'm just thankful. I'm truly thankful that, you know, I'm in an organization that would consider that. And last one for me, Eddie, you know, you mentioned, of course, the, the eventual showdown with Christian Lee. We said it after the last one, you know, even the way the fight ended, I think it would have been okay for you to move right into the fight with Christian Lee. Uh, but if everything goes well this week, I mean, rankings, all those kind of things aside, considering the, the career you put together, the resume you have, does it just make sense if you win on Wednesday night that you get, 
Christian Lee next? I mean, is that just the way it should go? I don't, I mean, the fans will speak for themselves, but I mean, at that point, I would have, um, Edward Fulang was a former champ. I dispatched to him in a minute and a half. The number two guy I just put away in 30 seconds. And then who knows how this fight's going to go, but I have every expectation of beating another ranked, top ranked guy. And uh, what else do you want? I mean, at the, look, at this point, Christian Lee has an opportunity to fight me. I don't, my opportunity isn't to fight Christian Lee. I beat 100 guys like Christian Lee already. Christian Lee has an opportunity to beat someone who's great. If you don't take advantage of that or is not foaming out the mouth at that, then it'll be his own, it'll be his own loss. It won't be mine. I beat, I've beat great people already. I've beat, I've beat, I've beat tons of great men already who've conquered many of other men. And um, my, my legacy will be etched in stone. Christian Lee has an opportunity at that. And um, he may lose it. Maybe he'll lose that opportunity. Yeah, I won't give it to him. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you, Eddie. Our right, next question will go to Leon Jennings of Asian Persuasion MMA. Leon, you're up. Eddie, good to see you back in Singapore so soon. Firstly, after uh, an emotional month full of roller coasters and tens of thousands of miles flown, how are you feeling right now? And are there any positives you can take from the whole situation at one on TNT one? A, a ton of positives, man. I'm look, I'm back here, right? And um, you know, everything's dust in the wind. They've reviewed it. Um, today was a very good day, them announcing that. You know, me and my family spoke on the phone. It was uh it was a rejoicing, it was a celebration for us, you know. Um, and I'm just thankful. I'm thankful to be with an organization that um would consider the review, would sit down and listen to professionals and listen to the fans and listen to everybody out there who um, who's involved and say, Hey, maybe we could do some things better and, you know, corrected some things. Um, I'm just thankful. Uh, I couldn't be, I couldn't be happier today. After Christian won, uh, be beating us to and I spoke to him. He's due to have a baby any minute now. He said he probably won't fight towards the end of the year. Would you take a fight in between this? If you win, get the win on Wednesday night, um, and if so, would, it, would you consider fighting Lapicus again if he's fit to fight in between? Maybe so. I don't know. Maybe I'll have another baby. <laughs> <laughs> last, just quick, last, quickly, um, how do you see the main event going between Ong and Song and when here to Ridder? Oh, I got to go with my man Ong. Ong's, Ong's battle tested, man. He's a warrior. And um, I love him. He has a heart of gold and uh, he has a warrior spirit. So. Um, can never bet against on. Cheers, Eddie. Good luck. Thank you, brother. Up next will be Tom Taylor of Bleacher Report. Tom, please go ahead. Hey, Eddie. How's it going? Hey, brother. Um, obviously, this is, you know, kind of unusual circumstances for a fight. Um, but how much training have you actually been able to do between that fight with Yuri and this fight this coming week? I mean, can you kind of describe this, this compacted little training camp you've had for us? See my eye? <laughs> Looking good. As soon as I landed from Singapore, I got right to work, man. Um, I didn't waste any time. I got two. Um, we went from Singapore. Um, I got back home. I think I got back home Sunday morning on J uh, JFK. Uh, I enjoyed the day with my family. I think I did go running on Sunday night, regardless. Um and then I spoke with my wife about the possibility of coming back here. I spoke at one championship and uh, seeing if, you know, if, if it was going to happen, the reality of it. And I think within, within a few days, we ironed it out and figured it out. And uh, I was sparring that Tuesday. So I, I, I didn't miss, I don't think I missed a single training session. Awesome. Um, looking a little a little further down the road, you've mentioned you know many times that your goal is to win the one lightweight title and and you know find a space for that between the the Bellator and UFC titles on your mantle. Um, that would be an amazing feat. But I mean, if you accomplish that, what's next? How do you possibly one up that? What's the next goal beyond that? Uh, I mean, when when I accomplish that, um, uh, like Thanos, I am I am inevitable. <laughs> I um. I'll get I'll get the the last stone and um, 
I'll defend it. It's that simple. I, I don't, you know, I don't make, I don't make too many plans too far out. I join organizations and I want to be the champion. I get fixated on it and I, and I, and I make my goal. I don't really don't make a plan B or plan C. I, I'm not, I'm not that I make one plan and I make sure that I, that I get, that I focus on that and that's that I get to it. Um, so I, I win the one lightweight um, title. I defend the title and then who knows, then maybe one will have super fights. There's plenty of guys, killers in this division, up and coming guys and guys that are already here to defend the belt against. I just think um, just being the reigning lightweight champion of one championship. Awesome. Thank you, Eddie. Good luck this week. Next question goes to Jack Gottsell of Tarpsoft Sports. Jack, you're up. How's it going, Eddie? Hey, brother. So uh, you just said uh, you plan to accomplish the uh, the ultimate feat of winning the one uh, championship. But would that be the toughest championship you've won? I know you've won the UFC. You've won Bellator, but you've gone through so much. The travel uh, from the U.S. to Singapore, the disqualification. Does all that make this so much more special for you? Or I just think it's at where I'm at in my life that makes it the most difficult title um, to win. You know, um, I've been in this sport almost two decades. It's very easy when you're young to be excited about a sport, to be a champion and, and get up early and go to bed late. But um, I have I had an unbalanced life when I was younger. So it was easy for me to just go after it and focus on that. But I have four children at home, a lovely wife. Um, I have, financially, I, I do, do not have to fight. I can do whatever I want. Um, I have a great balanced life outside of fighting. I fighting is something I do. I don't, I don't have to fight anymore in my life. So um, I'm at a really good place and uh, to choose to do this and to choose to go after these kids who are, who were where I was at when I was 25, 27, um, full of energy and full of hope and, and dreams. I'm competing with the best guys in the world right now. The youngest, the toughest, the hungriest in the world at one championship. And I'm beating them and I'm beating them soundly. So um, to go after this and to win this title will be the hardest title that I ever won. Yes. Thank you very much. I appreciate that. And thank you for your time. Our next question goes to Darnell Giovanni of MMA Island. Darnell, please proceed. Hey, Eddie, how you doing? Hey, what up, Darnell? I know you trained with Kamaru Usman over there in Colorado. Were you able to watch his fight on Saturday? And were you surprised at the uh, what happened between him and Masvidal? Um, so I, wa I, I was only able to see the replay because I was on the plane. Um, I only got to see, like, the prelims and stuff like that uh, when I was in the airport. But I got on the plane. I wasn't able to see the fight in its entirety yet. Um, I just seen the highlights, and uh, I couldn't be, be more proud of uh, – Kamaro, um, he's a constant, he's the epitome of a professional. He takes the sport dead serious. He crosses T's dots his eyes and he married this game. He married this sport and he's dedicated to it fully. And, uh, just being, being with him in Colorado and being with him over the years and seeing the work he's put in and the things that he had to overcome throughout, uh, he's been in some dark places throughout his career where, you know, and I've been there as well, where you're kind of looking the other way and saying, what are my other options? Because fighting's not kind of giving back what I'm putting in. Um, and as athletes, that happens to us. But man, to see him overcome everything and now to see him to be the dominant champion, pound for pound best in the world, um, it's incredible. It's incredible. That's awesome, Eddie. And just want to ask you one last question. Of course, you are a guy who like to talk about stocks would you ever consider writing a book maybe doing a youtube channel to explain all the investments you make yeah so so it, that that's a passion of mine that i get really excited about and it's not just stocks it's investing in general real estate you know <laughs> cryptocurrency um i have a number of different investments and lines in the water that um that i have outside of fighting where where i'm able to make money and uh, just learning about new ways um, to, to create to create uh, a dollar is fun for me. But uh, I believe me and a friend are going to start like a registered investment agency. 
and, uh, and maybe do something for athletes and fighters um, as far as being able to invest their money, being able to make a return their money, and then doing something educational where they can learn about how money works and, um, and just the idea of investing it. So like that, I think something would be fun for me. It'll be a chance for me to kind of, I, I say to everyone, uh, all my friends that uh, it's better to eat with your friends and uh, just saying it's fun to make money for me, but when you do it with a bunch of friends and you do it at a table together, it, uh, it amplifies, it makes it a lot better. So um, if I could, if I could take a community, whether it's MMA fighters or people that I know work really hard for their money and help them grow it, I think that'll be like, that'll be a, a passion project for me that I'd enjoy. Awesome, Eddie. And last one for me, I know you said the wife is loving the beard. How much longer are we going to keep it? <laughs> This might be full time, man. I don't know. This is a little scruffy. I need it. I need to trim it up a little bit. But um, yeah, I think the, I think mustache Eddie's gonna be. He's gonna be here for a while. <laughs> Thank you so much, Eddie. Thank one you. more question here. This one will go to Justin, Justin Kish from Justin Kish Sports. Please go ahead, Justin. Justin, can you hear us? Justin, are you there? We're gonna move on now. The next question will go to Jacob Janowski of Bloody Canvas MMA. Hi, Eddie, how are you? Hey, what's up, brother? All right, so you're traveling over about 30,000 miles there, back, and back again. How do you think the time zone change will affect you? It won't. I think, I, I think I'm so locked in and so focused. I could not sleep for the next 32 hours and go out, walk, walk out of that, walk down that tunnel and walk in that cage and be absolutely as violent as I would be on, on beautiful eight hours of sleep every night. I'm just... I'm locked in, I'm focused, and I'm here to fight. And uh, that's that's why I came back because I'm just in a – I'm in a groove in my training. I'm in a groove in my mind, and uh, I'm just – I, I want to fight. And I haven't felt this way uh, – I don't know. I haven't felt this way in a little while about, about fighting and about, uh, about wanting to compete and not, you know, not just uh, fearing the idea of being in front of a crowd and – and what if this happens? What if that happens? I actually want to compete and I want to get after someone. So, um, and I think the wear and tear shows it. So I'm excited. And having already fought in the morning of, uh, three weeks ago, do you think that you'll now have an advantage or do you feel better about fighting in the morning now? So I spar in the morning at home. So um, that's like the time, the time we fight here, we're fighting on American time, roughly 10 o'clock at night, nine o'clock at night. So the times don't change for me since I've been in Singapore. I, I wake up, um, at night when everyone's going to bed, I'm waking up and I'm up all night long in my hotel room. I'm staying on us time. I'm not, I'm not changing to Singapore time. Uh, I'm, I'm keeping my us wake up and I'm keeping my us time frame. And now, uh, you know, having been with one for a couple of years, what impact has one championship had on you as a person? Um, so as a person, I just think uh, just a a Asia in general, um, when I fought over here in 2006, met the fans and understood the culture of fighting here, which is a lot different than America. Um, I don't think I don't think in, in America, I think the result of the fight is everything win or lose is everything. And oftentimes fighters get booed, although they're courageous, although they put everything on the line, they get booed and they feel bad about themselves, about what they did. And uh, the truth is in Asia, they look at it a lot differently. Um, they, they applaud the, their, the, the courage of the fighter just for making the walk, for competing at a high level and fighting at, with a strong spirit. That's what's applauded. It's not so much to win or the loss, it's how you fight and the manner you fight in, the spirit you fight in. And um, that's just who I am. And that, that's, what I, that's what I would want to be commended for me because I do want to be commended off my effort and, and my effort that I gave 
and and who I competed against. All right, Eddie, that's all I got. Thank you so much, and good luck. Okay. That's all the time we have. Thank you so much, Eddie, for your time. All the best.